Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz. And <laughs> another day, another American tank. This time, the T95 E6, the American Tier 10 heavy tank. And it's a collector. But there's a downside. There's a big catch. There's a huge catch. There's a colossal catch. It's a bloody crate tank. Oh my god. Now, this tank first came out in the New Year's tree event, and again, it was it was a tank that was really difficult to get. This is the first time it's been released since then, and as you can see, it's pretty bloody expensive. Now, my store is in United Arab Emirates Dirhams, because I live in Dubai. And if you buy the set of 10 containers with the extra container, that comes to about $41 US. And if you buy the container on its own, and there's a special one at the moment where you buy, you, you know, you get two for the price of one, then it's about five dollars. I mean, it's it's not cheap, guys. And the chances of this tank dropping is 2.5 percent, which is pretty low. Now, I bought two sets of the ten containers because I'm stupid, and I bought the freebies because I'm equally stupid. So the freebies cost me what ten dollars, and then this bloody. 20 containers cost me effectively $82. So in total, it cost me close to $100 to get this tank. I mean, that is obscene. Yeah, well, you get one of these. It's a tier 10 American Heavy. And if you like the E5, and I'm not a big fan of the E5, then you'll love this tank. But will you love it for close to $100? Which, you know, is how much I almost spent. Okay, you might get lucky, you might get it in the first container, who knows? But will you like it enough for that price? I mean, that price is outrageous. Now, this is it in all its glory in its armor inspector, and as you can see, it's pretty thin on the backs and on the sides. It hasn't exactly got a, you know, thick hull or turret. Then you stick it into the armor inspector up against an E100, and as you can see, you know, the front of the turret is pretty rock solid. It's a good hull down tank. You'll get a good 10 degrees of gun depression on this thing, which isn't bad for a heavy. I mean, it's a typical American heavy tank. It's hull down. Um, if you're caught on the side and on the back, you're going to get hurt. The um, the cheeks of the turret, as you can see, they, they, they can be opened. So what's it like? Well, you've got HP damage of about 400, knocking out I and Alpha. Rate of fire, pretty slow, 6.6 .6 a minute. Penetration, not too bad, 271 millimeters. Armor, um, the armor's not too bad on the front, as we've seen. Uh, the speed is pretty decent, I mean, 35 kilometers an hour. And the rotation, how much it spins around, is pretty average. Nothing to write home about. So let's have a look at those stats in more detail. So it's got 2,000 hit points. Front armor, as you can see, is not too bad. The turret is 152. The hull is 114. The sides, pretty thin. Um, we saw that in the armor inspector on the hull. It's 76 and 19 at the rear. The turret's not too bad on the sides. Chance of fire impact, well, it's 15%. That's pretty low. View range, not too bad. Camo. Below average, you know, you got 41% when you're stationary. What about its DPM? Well, 2,651 a minute. It's got a reload time of just over 9 seconds. Penetration on your AP is 271, which is not bad at all. On your heat, it's 374. And on your HE, it's 66. Average damage, well, on your AP, you're going to churn out about 400 I and Alpha. On your, a on your heat, you're going to get 340. And on your HE, 515. Aim time... 3.5% near is damn it. Depression, as I said, is 10% and the elevation is 20%. Speed wise, well, top speed going forwards is 42, going backwards is 15, which gives you an average speed output of 35. Weight, well, it's not exactly heavy, it's about 41 tons. So it's not bad stat wise. However, it does come with a Surgeon General's warning. Guys, it's a crate tank. You are literally gambling here. Um, I would have hoped that Wargaming would have got rid of these stupid crates, but they haven't. They're still persisting, despite the fact that they are illegal in quite a few countries now. You, it's 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 a lucky dip, guys. You know, you spend your money and you you basically take your chance on a two and a half percent drop rate with a forty-one dollar crate package it's oh, i swear it's gonna take you two lots so you're gonna be spending close to a hundred dollars on this thing 
Is it worth $100? Well, no tank is worth $100. I don't care. I mean, this tank is not OP, realistically. It's a nice tank, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice tank to get around in. Um, but is it really worth $100? $100? No, um, is my honest opinion. And I would strongly advise you unless you really want this tank and you're absolutely heart set in, on this tank don't spend your cash guys and wait for it to come around again it's taken seven months for it to come out into the stores since its first release give it another six months or so and it'll come around again it'll be re-released and the chances are you're going to pick it up for a lot less than a hundred dollars but I'm not, you know, it's up to you. If you want to take your chances, if you want to take your risks and, and drop a shed load of money on crates, you might get lucky, you might get it in the first crate, or you might get unlucky and get it in the 30th crate. Who knows? Um, I saw, somebody sent me a link the other day that Wargaming were also selling the M60 for $100. I mean, guys, the M60 was a free tank to a lot of, for, to not a lot of people, actually, to a few people. I got it for gratis. I didn't spend a single penny on the M60. Okay, when it was first released, it caused a lot of consternation. But it's the same as this tank. So, you know, Wargaming are releasing a lot of American tanks because it's the American Independence Days. And they're, they're, they're releasing them for stupid prices. Let's not kid ourselves here. I mean, you had the, T, the, uh, the, the what was it, the, the T6E something, uh, tier 4 which was almost, you know, which was expensive. It was, you know, $10 for a tier 4 tank. Then you, they released the M60 for $100, which it's not worth $100, don't care what anybody says. And now they've released this, which is a great tank, and you're going to spend close to $100. Now, you know, it's your call, but I personally think it's too expensive. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was doing these videos and I was, you know, trying to grow my YouTube channel, etc., etc., then... Boy, I would be utterly peeved at getting this tank. But what's it like gameplay-wise? Well, gameplay, it's not too bad. It, it, it is a nice tank to drive around in. It's a nice tier 10. I cannot knock the tank. I mean, the tank is a good tank. But f I, I don't agree with it being in a crate. And I don't agree with the pricing that it took to get this bloody tank. I mean, it's just ridiculously overexpensive. But the gameplay on this tank is is really, really nice. It's very smooth. It's got a nice gun. It's got a great turret. It's got nice mobility. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed playing it. I, it, it was nice to drive this tank at tier 10. But did I get $100 worth of fun out of it? No. I mean, will I play it again? Of course I will. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll play it again and again and again. But will I, will I you know... Will I enjoy it a hundred dollars worth before it's re-released again for you know a fraction of that price? Well, the honest answer is no. And don't forget, if you come to sell this tank, it'll cost you in return. They'll give you back some credits and seven thousand five hundred gold. This tank is not worth a hundred dollars under no stretch of the imagination. I mean, Wargaming are, are basically listing it with the gold and with the. Um, with with the credits, I mean, I just tell you now. I mean, if I come to sell this tank, I'll be selling it for. Oh God, hang on. I'll be selling it for what exactly? What will I be selling it for? I'll be selling it for um, 150,000 credits and 7,500 gold. That works out at nowhere near 100 dollars. Um, you know, it works out to what? About 20 dollars, give or take. I mean. Maybe $30 tops, but nowhere near $100, and nowhere near what, uh, you know, it's going to cost to buy that first chunk of crates, which is $40-odd dollars. It ain't worth it. Um, you know, Wargaming don't value this tank much past $30. So, you know, your risk. Anyway, as I said, it's a nice tank. I mean, so far in this game, I've done just over 2,600 damage. I haven't killed anything, but I've been a nuisance, and I've not even had my paintwork scratched yet. It's fantastic haul down. Um, you know, it's got great mobility, as I said. And I liked it. I enjoyed this tank. And I absolutely ate the E5. <laughs> you know, the E5 for me is a horrid tank. But I enjoyed this one. I thought it was a pleasurable tank to drive. 
uh, you know, I've got a second class here. I'm not setting any world records in this thing. Just over 3,000 damage, that's all. But it was nice to roll out in it. And, uh, you know, I so I rolled out in it again, this time on Alpenstadt. And the call was to go this way, so we all went this way. And as you can see, it's not a supremacy game, it's just a straightforward encounter. The thing is, the sides and the back of this thing are pretty paper thin, especially in the hull. So you've got to keep it hauled down. It's no different to any other American tank. And, you know, it's a realistically, it's a second line support tank, it's not a front liner. And, you know, if you've got a good place to haul down, then it's nice. It's a nice tank. And you'll see here, you know, you get some. The, the gun is very nice. I mean, we just knocked that E100 for over 450. It's a nice gun. And this is the thing about this tank. I mean, some of the American tanks struggle with pen, uh, which is one of my biggest arguments against the E5. I think the E5 does struggle with its penetration. This doesn't. This will pen most things. Um, okay, a bounce there, but that's T57 Heavy coming straight at me. The thing about this tank, gameplay-wise, is it's it's nice and fluid. It's got good armor on that turret, as you see. That just bounced over 600 from the um, E100, who's now been wasted. Stick it in the right place, you are formidable. You know, you're just a menace to the enemy. You've got a good gun. You've got realistically a very nice reload time. It's not excessive. Uh, at the end of the day, it's less than 10 seconds, it's just over 9 seconds. I'm running calibrated shells here just for the extra oomph. Um, okay, I bounced the object there, but not to worry. And the thing is, you know, you back it away, you get it in a nice position, you can look at the aim time at the end. I mean, three and a half seconds to get the aim time down is nothing. You can live with that. So I've lost half my hit points here. I've just done over 1,200 damage. Um, I haven't taken a kill yet. And there you go, kill number one. Next to nothing, but kill number one. And, you know, I'll take that kill any day of the week. So, yeah, you know, the T-57 Heavy is not going to pull out enough there. I was hoping he was. Yes, he is. Yeah, smack him. Then I can see the Object 140 making a break for it. And this is, goes to show how accurate and how good this gun is. So I'm going to forget the T-57 Heavy, focus on the object. There he is, making a break. Boom, gone. I mean, that is a great gun. I mean, that was an optimistic shot, and it worked. Unfortunately, I can't get the 57 Heavy. He's, he's just not popping out enough. No, not to worry, though. Somebody else takes him out. And there goes his turret flying into the ether. Now we're going to push down on the Object 268, who's over there. He's being pushed by the Grilly and another one of my teammates. I'll get around the corner and I'll plonk one into him for kill number three. Now we've just got the IS-7 and I think it's an E3 that we've got left to deal with. Now the IS-7 I'm not going to bother with at the moment. The E3 is a better target for me. He's closer and he's a one shot. So here we go. Hello. Okay, well, goodbye. Kill number four. Okay, only 2,000 something odd damage. We bounced quite a bit. We got four kills. And this was probably the most generous of masteries that have ever been given in a tier 10 tank. But I'm not going to knock it. I will take that mastery every day of the week and twice on Sundays. The only reason I got that mastery is because not many people are stupid enough to buy this tank. <laughs> and therefore there aren't many of them out there. That is why I got the mastery. What's it like though? It's a nice tank. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing it. I enjoyed rolling out in it. Did I, did I enjoy spending the money to get it? No, I didn't. Do I regret spending the money getting it? Yes, I did. Do I wish I would have waited? Yes, I do. And that's my advice to you. It's a beautiful tank. It's a nice tank. It's an expensive tank. Unless this is a must-have for you guys, wait. Bide your time. It will come back to the stores at a fraction of the cost that it currently is. Anyway, that has been the T95E6, the recent addition to the store. It's a crate tank at your peril. Partake in it. I've been Fujit. I hope you've enjoyed that. By all means, you know, comment, like, and everything below. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I'm five subscribers away from 600, and that would be really nice. Plus, you can take part in my great gold giveaway, the details of which are on my channel and on my Discord server and on the EU and, North Amer and the North American and Asia servers. So until then, guys, I will say my usual. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.